Hello ladies and gents, this is a new video brought to you by Answered. And today I want to talk to you about my experiment, which is the ant hibernation experiment. And I will explain it in all great details, so just wait out. But first let me tell you about my Patreon page. The link will be down below. I've spoke about it loads so you know about it, but you'll get access to a Discord server just for my Patreons, where you guys can talk to me about my videos. Suggest what you want, get free stuff into raffles and stuff like that if you are at that right tier level. So check it out. Like these guys, they're helping support my channel and you can too. So this time of year is generally quiet on this front, but towards hibernation, towards the end of the season, then people start asking this question a lot. Should I or should I not hibernate my ants? And a lot of people say, yes, you should, because the queens need to. That's what they're evolved to do. If you don't, they're going to die. If you don't, they're not going to be as active. They're not going to produce enough eggs. They're not going to grow as quickly. The shorter life expectancy. Everything that you always hear about not hibernating them. Now in nature, they do need to hibernate because there's not the resources out there, such as food and stuff in winter to support them. So they do need to hibernate, but they're not in nature, are they? We are hobbyists, we are ant keepers. So do we really need, is it really detrimental if we don't hibernate these ants? That is the question that I want to answer with this experiment. Now, if this experiment finds that there is no detrimental effect to them to not hibernate them because we give them the resources that they want all through winter, then as hobbyists, why would we hibernate if there's no real need for it? I mean, keeping my ants all year round, well, that's what I want, because in winter is when I spend most of my time in my ant cave anyway. So with this experiment, what am I actually going to do? Well, I'm gonna talk you through every bit of the process, guys, and how I need you guys to help. So these are the objectives of my experiment. To test if there's a significant difference in growth between the two colonies. Test if there is a significant difference in life expectancy, to test if there's a significant difference in activities, obviously when they're both active. And finally, to test if there's a higher fatality rate with non-hibernated colonies. This is subject to change, I may add some further objective later on. To make sure that this experiment is fair, that all variables are treated the same, I've got some control measures which I'm putting into place, and they are as follows. I intend to collect 10 queens with five that I'm hibernating and five that I'm not to keep them active all year round. I'm going to feed them the same kind of foods. Yes, if the colony's bigger, they're going to need more food, so they will get that more food. But if I feed them different types of food with different protein content, it could affect the growth. Where possible, keep them in the same kind of setups. And finally, they must be caught at the same nuptial flights, which is the summer of 2021. To do it with 10 queens with five hibernating, five not hibernating, would give me a generalization of if it's beneficial to hibernate or not in a captive environment. But I don't want a general idea. I want more, but I can't physically look after more than 10 uh, Connollys with all the already 30 that I've currently got. So I need your help. I need you to take part in this experiment as well. You don't even need to collect 10 queens. If you can only collect two or three queens or four queens, you get two of each. That will still help me and it will still get the data that I need to get a much better picture if it is beneficial to hibernate in a captive environment or not. So I intend to control all the information stuff via this Facebook page. So if you're interested in joining the experiment, check out this Facebook page. I'll put it in the description below and you can have a look and you see you can take part in it. Obviously we need to collect queens this summer guys. So it is fairly fast paced, but fingers crossed, you should all get some decent queens from this flight and then we can start the experiment. I will collate all this information on this Facebook group um, and then put it on a spreadsheet so then we can start looking at analyzing the data. Now I know this is not gonna be a short term experiment. We're, we're looking at like at least two years to get some form of decent data, potentially even longer. But if you're committed to do this, it is cheap, it is easy. You can get test tubes off Amazon for a couple of quid. They're not expensive. As you can see here, you can get like 30 for 20 quid. Well, that's expensive. <laughs> I wouldn't do that one, not when you can get like 10 for like eight pound i think somewhere down here you've got 30 for 11 pounds so bear that in mind it is cheap it is really cheap and this isn't just for the experienced ant keepers this experiment if you want to get involved as well and you're new into ant keeping why not start with this experiment this is the reason you need to go out and collect queens for the next nuptial flights and yes i'm aware my acrylic's a bit dusty i haven't dusted leave me alone we all know that nuptial flights for lagus nigers are happening imminent imminently Im are happening really soon so make sure you're prepared 
And if you're not prepared, I mean, I've got test tubes in my work bag because I'm that sad. But if you haven't got test tubes, keep them in a little cup or like I used a coffee cup, disposable one. I used an empty water bottle at some, obviously the coffee cup's got to be empty as well, by the way. <laughs> but yes, an empty cup or coffee cup, empty bottle of water. I've used them both and I just collected all the queens together. And in the evening when I got home, I sorted them out into their relevant test tubes. And you can do the same. I really need your help on this experiment to give me a really Really good broad outlook of how it all occurs and if it is uh, just what people say it is or in a captive environment I must say captive environment is this not necessarily necessary but don't worry this isn't just a UK thing if you're in another country in Europe's northern Europe where you've got latest Nigers as a native species where they are required to hibernate you can take part two just make sure that you abide by the control measures that I've put in for this experiment i.e. they get collected at the same nuptial flights I'm not too fussed if it's later on in the summer or not but I would prefer it to be the same nuptial flights so the Queens have got the exact same start point to give accurate results don't forget to check out the Facebook group, the Ant Hibernation Experiment, and then join along and get involved in the experiment. But that's it for today then, guys. I know it's shorter than my normal videos, but I hope you enjoyed it, and you've hoped I sparked your interest in getting involved in my experiment. Because this is an experiment where you don't sit back and watch, you get involved, and that's what I want to happen. The more people get involved, the better and more accurate the results can be. I will put a link in the description for both my Patreon page, if you want to support my page, and the Facebook group. So check it out down below and join the experiment. But as always, that's it for today then guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next video.